it's interesting when I just come live on Facebook and it always takes a minute or two for people to pop on so I'm like just looking at myself <laughs> and when I just start looking at myself I feel like I gotta do something you know <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I like the waves behind me. Gosh, I have been inspired by, <clears throat> I don't always, personally, me, I don't always think about things like, um, I just kind of get to the point. I delve into things, right? And so in my process of getting to the point of delving into things, I don't always think about like my background or like the beautification of things. Um, and so I've been really inspired by both um, Debbie and Erica because they do pay attention to the beautiful beautification of things. And I've noticed how much that makes a difference because we are looking at, you are looking at what I am sharing, you know, or when we watch a Facebook Live. So when there's a nice tapestry or there's nature to look at, it adds to the experience. So yeah, so I've been enjoying this little backdrop that I've got here um, in my living room. If you do not know me, I am Lisa McNett and <clears throat> I've been a yoga instructor since, I don't know, a long time. I've been a yoga instructor for a long time. I'm a breathwork facilitator, um, holistic health practitioner, body worker, all those good things. So my focal point um, and my intention is I help people reconnect with themselves on all levels. So physically, emotionally, mentally, and um, spiritually. And <clears throat> when we connect to our body, when we consciously connect to our body and breathe and move, a lot of things happen. So this class, Hey Kevin, thanks for popping in. Um, this class is called Breathe, Move, Stretch. Simple as that, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna breathe, move, and stretch. So you don't um, need to be anything in particular with regards to um, uh, physically, physical capability. Um, you can stay in a chair the whole time. You can be with limited mobility. You can just stick with the breath practices the whole time um, if you have a, a extremely limited mobility. Um, or you can explore some movement. So be mindful of your body, <clears throat> what you need, and what works for you throughout our practice today. Today is International Breathing Day. There is an International Breathing Day and that is today. So, how fitting. So we're gonna just start, you can sit comfortably. At some point you might want to lie down. So I said you don't need a yoga mat for this and you don't necessarily need a yoga mat, but at some point you may wish to lie down. So if you'd like to have you know, a blanket, uh, if you wanna grab a blanket <clears throat> to have for later, or if you're comfortable just lying on the floor wherever you are, just know that we might move in that direction. <clears throat> so, I always want to start with connecting to your own personal breath. So if it's comfortable for you, close your eyes or just keep your gaze soft, which means let the muscles around your eyeballs relax. Let the muscles around your eyeballs relax. And let your mouth open just slightly. So just release any tension or holding in your jaw. Bring your shoulders up and back and down. Wiggle jiggle them a little bit. And let your elbows soften. Let your hands just rest comfortably wherever they may be. No effort, no holding any muscles in the hands or fingers. Then 
and just feel the breath move in and out of your body. What does it feel like to breathe inside your body in this moment? Just be with this ex exploration about a minute, perhaps noticing what parts of your body move with the inhale and the exhale. Perhaps noticing what's longer, your inhalation or your exhalation. Noticing anything there is to be aware of about your breath. So by now you might be noticing some physical sensations. Feel the way you connect with what's beneath you. Feel the way your feet connect with the floor, your buttocks connect with the chair. If there's any other points of contact your body's making, notice how that feels. And notice any places within your body you may experience discomfort or tightness. And with each exhalation, see if you can let go of any amount of holding or tension. You're welcome to shift a little bit in your chair to move or stretch. Readjusting your body to a place of more ease and comfort. And we'll start playing with the breath a little bit. So on your next exhalation, let a little bit of a sigh come out or a lot of a sigh come out. So we'll take some breaths, breathing into your body. And as you exhale, let a sigh come out. And with that, let any tension leave your body. <sighs> and you can take some physical movement with that sigh if you want to, to really <sighs> let something out. And you might even feel like you want to make it bigger by standing up, exhaling, and <sighs> can lift your arms and throw them down with the exhale or just remain in your seat and keep it soft just explore what feels good hmm. And then coming back to your normal breath. <clears throat> coming back maybe to a seated position since we're exploring breath practices today. 
One breath practice that's so important to your health and well-being is yawning. And just when I mention yawning, you might start yawning. Notice if that happens. So in society, we oftentimes cover our mouth and try to hold back a yawn because we've decided that yawning is um, uh, makes people think that we're tired or is because we're tired or because we're bored. But really, it's a reset. It's a reset to our nervous system. Whenever we take a yawn, we are um, balancing our nervous system. We uh, can also potentially yawn when we're energizing our body or needing to mobilize. If you've been studying or focused on something that's required a lot of brain power for a long period of time, you will tend to take a big yawn because your brain, it's a big a way for your brain to get a lot of oxygen. So yawning, yawning is a function that helps our system. Yawning is like going to the bathroom, okay? Yawning is a natural part of what we need to be doing. It helps cleanse, it helps clear. And so hopefully you're yawning already. But if you aren't, and if there are kids in the room, because I, I said this is kid friendly, and it is, you can play with making this really exaggerated with the kids. And if you are alone and not feeling um, you know, self-conscious, I invite you to really play with your yawns. So we'll just start by taking a ah, uh, maybe a stretch. inviting a yawn, oh, opening up to a yawn, oh, and inviting your body to move some that the yawn starts to come naturally. So again, you might want to take a stand up and even make it a full body yawn. Just a or dogs or any animal really yawns, it really becomes a full body experience. You can see them yawn and stretch and go into that sort of cat cow or down dog movement that we emulate in yoga just as they yawn. <sighs> they yawn. yawn helps connect with the body. The yawn helps you <sighs> yeah, connect with your body. So <sighs> if you, if you <clears throat> are not standing, I invite you to stand now. Okay. If you don't want to stand, you can stay sitting. And if you're going to stay sitting, you can start doing some shaking, we're gonna shake. So if you're sitting, you can just start shaking the hands and the wrists, okay? But if you feel comfortable standing up, I'm gonna move this back a little bit more. We're gonna stand up and <clears throat> I want you to just stand a comfortable distance with your feet and feel the connection your feet is making with the ground. Once again, either close your eyes or gaze softly towards the floor, keeping the muscles behind your eyes, the muscles around your eyes soft and relaxed. Bend your knees, and as you bend your knees just a little bit, the pelvis goes into a natural adjustment. Keeping your jaw relaxed. Breathe and notice your body. What are you aware of inside your body in this moment? Feel the connection your feet is making, are making with the ground. And with each exhalation, let your feet get a little heavier as you 
tension melt out of your body, sink down into your feet, and out through your feet into Mother Earth. The Earth can handle the earth can handle all of our stress, all of our tension. It can just take it and recycle it and turn it into a beautiful plant. <sighs> so once your feet are really heavy and your body is really light and soft, we start just a little bounce at the knees. Just a little bounce at the knees and notice how just this little bounce at the knees carries through your whole body. So as I bounce my knees, I notice one hip feels a little more open than the other. What do you notice? Does one shoulder, one arm move a little more than the other or a little easier than the other? <sighs> Let's let this bounce get a little bigger. Maybe sway a little from side to side as you bounce and the weight changes from one foot to the other. Swaying back and forth. <sighs> and we'll come back to center and we'll just, we'll take a little bit of a twist from side to side. So let the body with the arms turn. Let yourself come up onto the toes of one foot as you swing your arms from side to side. You can keep the bounce going too if you want. That's a little bit for me, like rubbing my belly and tapping my head. So I can just swing without the bounce. And we'll come back to center. <clears throat> and take your arms out, reach your fingers forward, arms reach forward, and look, you might notice that one arm feels a little stickier than the other. You might even see visually that one thumb goes out um, a little bit further than the other. So we're gonna see what happens in just a moment, okay? So we're gonna shake out the right wrist really nicely. Just give a real nice shake, 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 shake to the right wrist and go all the way up the arm, letting it go all the way up the shoulder. And then let that arm relax. Notice the tingly sensations down the whole arm. And then we change sides. Second wrist, we shake, 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 shake. And a good, nice shake. Shaking all the way up to the shoulder. And then let that go. And feel the tinglys down that arm. Now you can reach both arms forward and just notice if they feel different with the how loose they are. And also if you visually notice a difference between, uh, they typically even up, which is like the coolest thing ever. All right, we'll come back to center. So since we are mm, standing, we'll go ahead and stay in the standing position and move into a little bit of stretching, okay? So you can go ahead and bring your feet maybe a little bit wider than hip distance, uh, a little bit wider than hip distance, and have your feet parallel to one another. So that means that um, they're not turned out or in, they're just facing forward, okay? And I'd like you to find your thighs, so you can squeeze them from the inside, bring your hands to your hips, and draw your belly button a little bit towards your spine to protect your low back. We're going to come forward any amount, and as I come forward, I'm just going to feel a stretch in the back of my legs. 
I don't have to come far. I can bring my hands to my upper legs or somewhere on my thighs and use that as a little bit of resistance, okay? So when I use my hands on my legs, I don't need to go into a deep forward bend to get something to happen. I can just kind of press back my hands to my thighs and I can keep my chest lifted and my spine in a natural happy alignment. And we'll go ahead and come back up, take a couple breaths, shake out your legs. All right, we'll take a little break from that and we'll elongate the sides of our body. So if it's comfortable for you, you can bring your right arm up and if you have a shoulder issue, keep your right hand on your hip. Feet are gonna be about hip distance and we're gonna reach that, we're gonna keep our chest open and reach the left hand down. As I reach the left hand down, I feel a stretch on the right side of my body. And if I'm comfortable reaching my right arm towards the ceiling, um, I can gaze up at that and I might feel just a little bit more, but even here, I have a nice stretch happening. And we'll go ahead and come back to center, releasing that right hand, taking a breath. <sighs> Always coming back to our breath. And then we'll change sides. Okay, so if we're comfortable raising the left arm, great. If not, it just stays on the hip and the right arm reaches down. Chest stays open, which means I'm not letting my shoulder come forward, but I'm keeping my left shoulder back, reaching the right hand down, either staying here or the right, or excuse me, left arm can reach up and I can gaze up at it. And we'll go ahead and come back to center, release the arm. And we'll take our forward bend again. So we'll do this three times total. We've already done it once, so we'll take two more. So if you feel really open in your hamstrings and you regularly do forward bends and you'd like to take more of a forward bend, you're welcome to. Um, the wider your feet are, the easier it will be on the back of our body. So if we know we have tighter hamstrings, we definitely want to keep the feet um, wider than hip distance, or at least hip distance. So once again, we're going to find those thighs from the inside, find the muscles from the inside. Let the belly button come a little bit towards your spine just to protect your low back, and then hands can slide down the front of your thighs moving your chest forward and I want to keep my I'm looking at you guys but I want to keep you want to keep your um, the natural curves of your spine so you want to keep your head in line your chin tucked just slightly you're not lifting your head up to look at me you don't need to look at me take a few breaths into the back of your your legs and maybe your buttocks wherever you're feeling this And on an inhale, you can go ahead and come back up. Shake your legs out as you come back together. Okay. And we'll move back into our side stretch. All right. So feet can be hip distance apart. Grounding through our feet so they stay connected nicely to the floor. Left hand's gonna reach down, my right shoulder stays open and back, and my right hand either stays on my hip or extends towards the ceiling, and if it does, I'm gonna gaze up. I'm gonna keep moving my left shoulder down. I don't wanna shrug any shoulders up towards my ears. Inhale to come up. Take a breath. And 
and we'll change sides. So we're gonna reach the right hand down, left hand either comes to the hip or extends up as the right hand reaches down. Again, I'm also moving the right shoulder down. I don't wanna shrug anything up towards my ears. Opening up that whole left side of the body, and if the arm is lifted, I gaze up towards the fingertips. And we'll go ahead and come back to center, lowering the hand, taking a breath, shaking everything out. Not that we really need to, but. <sighs> All right, so we have one more forward bend to do. And if it got easy, if the last time was easier than the first time, you're welcome to move your feet a little bit closer together. Again, the wider the legs, the easier it is going to be on tight hamstrings. Open hamstrings, you can come closer with the legs. Okay, so we're gonna find the thighs from the inside. We're gonna engage those. Belly button comes a little bit towards the spine, engaging muscles of the core. Hands can slide down our thighs a little bit and chest moves forward. And if you want to move more deeply into this, you can just carefully lower your hands down a little bit. Keep your chest, chest lifted and lengthening forward. And on an inhale, go ahead and come back up. Take a breath. Shake out what needs to shake out. Okay. <sighs> Last time, each side with our side stretch. So, when you're ready, left hand reaches down. Right hand either comes to your hip or reaches towards the ceiling. Arms reaching in opposite directions, or at least shoulders reaching in opposite directions. Yeah? And we'll go ahead and carefully come back up, take a breath. And last time, last side. So the right hand's going to reach down, left hand is either going to reach up or stay on the hip, but either way, the shoulders are essentially moving in opposite directions and opening up the left side of my body. And on an inhalation, go ahead and come back to center, relax your hand. <sighs> Let's just take a couple breaths, notice how you feel. We're gonna take some rotations with the torso. So you can, it's like hula hooping. It's one of, it's one of those simple exercises are my favorite. So we'll just take the hips to one side, forward to the second side and back. So I'm not lowering my chest, I'm just moving my hips. And go ahead and reverse the direction. and come back to center. Shake it out. All right, so there's a few different things we can get, we can do. <clears throat> the question is, do I wanna have you guys come down to the floor yet? I think I'd like to just get a little bit more movement of the spine and the diaphragm and the chest. 
So you can take your choice. You can do this standing, and if I'm standing, I'm just gonna have a really soft and solid stance as we did before where the feet are just really heavy and my knees are soft. Yeah, let's all do this. Let's stand. Sorry, I'm, I'm indecisive. <laughs> stand, sit, stand, sit. We're gonna stand. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if it's comfortable for you, and if it's not, um, you can use one arm if the other arm doesn't work, or we don't have to use any arms. But if you're comfortable using your arms, <clears throat> we'll bring the fingertips towards each other to bring a bowl, like I'm holding a bowl. My chest lifts, my shoulders are backing down. And on my inhalation, I'm gonna open up wide. And I can even bend my elbows and bring them back. I get a stretch here, my chest lifts, and on my exhalation, I slowly come back to center. Again, if, you, if that irritates your shoulders, you could just inhale, bring the shoulders back, opening your chest, and then exhale to round the belly a little bit and come forward, okay? This is how we do it without the arms. And if you have arms and you are wanting to use them, hopefully you're still inhaling to open and exhaling to close. And just keep moving with your breath. just finishing up this last one okay and now we'll come back to a seated position <sighs> so some of you I think hopped on a little bit late so um, I just want to let you know that today is International Breathing Day most people do not know that if you are not in, within the realm in the world of breath work I don't know why you would know that maybe some yoga teachers are aware <clears throat> so, I'd like to um, share with you one of my very favorite, one of my very favorite, if not my favorite, <laughs> breath work uh, practice. My, one, of my, one of the best breath work techniques that we have. Um, it's called coherence breathing, and this breath practice um, was uh, established and created and researched by uh, people with the Heart Math Institute, and it is uh, shown, there's evidence to, sh to show that it um, helps lower your blood pressure, um, it helps with stress, it helps with depression, um, and with a variety of other health and particularly cardiac related issues. So the thing about it is you practice for five minutes, three times a day over a week, and that's when you see um, changes to these things that I just mentioned. Um, so if you have any issues, any uh, you know, high blood pressure, um, hypertension, high blood pressure, hypertension, um, or you know, struggle with anxiety, depression, this is a great breath practice for you um, to do three times a day. Uh, five minutes a day. So it sounds so simple, five minutes a day, 15 minutes, right? But um, it can be so hard for us to create and establish a practice like that in our day. But it's a nice way to wake up at lunch and before bed. So this coherence breath, it helps to bring into coherence our cardiac rhythm. Um, it helps to balance our nervous system. And it also bring, it brings in all the systems of our body into coherence. And what's really cool about it is it also, like if you are old enough to have ever gone into a clock shop, the old grandfather clocks that all go and they don't even have power batteries, they bring each other into sync, into coherence. And so we do this uh, 
when we practice this with other people or even if they're not practicing with them, we have an effect on them. So it's super cool. <sighs> it's a lot of talking, sorry. Um, there are two steps to this practice. One is the breath. And the second one is a bit of a visualization. So I'm going to start you with the breath practice and then I'll bring in the visualization. The breath practice is a matched or even inhalation and exhalation. So the idea is to take six breaths per minute, which means a five second inhale and a five second exhale. So you don't have to know anything outside of that, like a five second inhale and a five second exhale. If it's a struggle for you to take five second inhale and exhales, then start where you're at. If it's matched three second, three second, great. Four second, four second, great. Start where you're at, but just the key is to match the inhale and the exhale. So sitting however it's comfortable for you in this moment, Again, once again, closing your eyes or just gazing softly towards the floor. Start focusing on your breath. You can breathe in and out through the, through the nose. Or if it's better for you to breathe out through the mouth, you can do that as well. The most important thing here is the matched breath. So let's take an inhale together and an exhale together and start counting your next inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, inhale, two, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five. Fall into your rhythm with your matched breath. And once you're in that rhythm with your breath, I invite you to bring your awareness to your chest, to your heart, still keeping the matched breath. Perhaps placing one or two hands on your chest and feeling your heart beat or just connecting with your heart visually. What are you aware of about your chest or your heart in this moment? As you stay with this even inhale and even exhale, I invite you to call to mind or heart or both a memory of a time you felt happy, a joyful memory, perhaps a time you felt loved or felt love for another. And the 
This isn't always an easy activity, I understand. So just giving yourself a few moments to feel into a time that you felt happy, loved, or loved for another. And once you have that memory, be in that memory. Let yourself feel inside your body any and all sensations, emotions connecting to this joyful, happy, loving memory. Staying with a matched inhale and exhale. Let yourself feel. How does it feel inside your body? Where do you feel these memories inside your body? And once you feel really connected to this this memory to this feeling more more so to this feeling i invite you to on your exhale to share this love this happiness these positive feelings to let them go out as you exhale filtering into the world adding to the positivity of this web we are all surviving in. And then as you inhale, breathe in more of this positivity, breathe in more of these feelings. So you're creating a loop connected to your heart. With each inhale, you bring in more positivity into your heart. And with each exhale, you share from your heart this positivity with all life. Just be in this possibility for another minute or two. Be in this practice for another minute or two. And know that you can always come back here. In fact, I recommend you come back here three times a day for five minutes. moment awareness, noticing 
the effects that breath practice may have had on you. And I will invite you now to lie down on the floor and look, Cherry is here. She felt the love. Oh, he, she walked away. So if it's not comfortable for you to lie on the floor or you don't want to, you can stay seated. Everything that we are doing, you can modify from a seated position. <clears throat> I am going to lie down. <sighs> okay. So once you lie down, and if you need, again, if you came a little bit late, you might not have a pillow or a blanket. If you need one, you can grab one really quick. Um, I don't recommend being on a pillow with your head unless you really need to um, or unless your head tips back. So when we lie on the floor, we want our, um, our nose to be above the chin and not the chin to be above the nose. So if you feel like your head is tilted back, or I should say if you can see the wall behind you, then definitely put a pillow underneath your head. When you lie your head on the floor, you shouldn't see the wall behind you. Okay, so once we get down here, we're just going to loosely hug the knees in towards the chest and rock a little from side to side. And if you're sitting still, just draw one knee towards your chest. Okay, even if you're sitting, you can just draw one knee towards your chest. But if we're on the floor, we can definitely rock a little from side to side. Knees might be further away. You might not even be able to hold, but we can still take a little bit of movement, okay? And we'll come back to center and we're gonna hug the right knee in towards your chest any amount. So again, if you're sitting, you can still lift and hug your right knee towards your chest, straightening the left leg. And then we're going to switch sides. So my right leg straightens on the floor. My left knee hugs in any amount. Okay, and I can go ahead and release. And go ahead and place both feet on the floor so your knees are bent. Knees are bent and both feet are on the floor. <clears throat> okay, and that just helps your low back a little bit. So we're going to take the feet wide, and if you're seated, you can do this too. You can take the feet a little bit away from each other, and we're going to do these little windshield wipers. So we lower both knees to one side, or just shift the knees to one side if I'm in a chair, okay? And you're going to feel a stretch down the, the leg that's moving down the center line of your body. Okay? And then we'll switch sides. So one knee comes out to the side and the other is shooting down the center line of your body. And that's where I'm going to feel a stretch. And we'll just go back and forth a, a few more times. You might want to... Stay. Some of us might want to stay in the stretch, and some of us might just want to go with just the movement. Even just moving the hips from, moving the knees from side to side, you are getting a rotation in the hip joint, and it's lubricating that joint capsule. and take the feet closer to one another and I invite you to just take a few breaths 
check in with your body and notice what does your body need or want in this moment? Whether you're seated, whether you are lying on the floor, what does your body want? My legs want to straighten and I want to take a big stretch reaching my arms overhead. What does your body want? What does your body need right now? Your body is different from my body. What does it need right now? So one thing I'm doing that I really love with my legs on the floor, or excuse me, my legs completely on the ground, I reach, I lengthen my right leg, my right foot forward, and then I switch sides. So my hips move up and down as I lengthen opposite legs forward. I love the way that feels. What does your body want though? Explore, move around. You have the freedom to listen to your body. stretch and less of a twist. Okay, I'm going to scooch back so that you can see me. Hopefully I'll show you, I'll demonstrate from both sides. I'm going to lift one leg so that my knee is over my hip. My knee is over my hip. I'm going to bring the opposite hand to the outside of my leg and I'm just going to draw it across my body. I don't have to go far before I feel something happening either in here or in here. So I can keep the shoulder down and I can just play with getting a bit of a stretch there. And I can go in and out of that too. So I can go in and I can soften out. And then on an exhale, I can go back into it. Just playing with movement and a bit of a stretch. Doesn't have to be big. I'm going to come back to center, release, and lower that foot. And notice if there's any difference on the two sides. I like comparing the two. After we've done one side, you can always feel a little bit of a release. So we're going to do the second side. So I'm going to lift my leg, and my knee is over my hip. And my opposite hand comes around and draws my leg However far I'm going to go till I feel something happening in my buttocks or somewhere along the outer leg, okay? That straight leg is relaxed. And again, I can move in and out of this with my breath. I'll go ahead and come back to center release and lower my leg and if you'd like you can bring a pillow underneath your knees we're just going to go into corpse pose into shavasana and so if there's any strain on your low back whatsoever bring a rolled up blanket or yeah a rolled up blanket is fine underneath your knees or your pillow or if you have a chair nearby, you can also turn your body towards the chair and bring your shins up to rest on the chair. And that will take all, that will take a lot of pressure out of your low back. That's a really nice, a really nice way to close. So once you're in your final relaxation place, once again, let go of your jaw. And start to, with each exhalation, release any amount of holding or tension from your body.
And breath just moves in and out of you like a wave. Soft and gentle. With each exhale, your body sinks down just a little bit more as it becomes lighter at the same time. Turning your awareness to your breath. Noticing how it feels to breathe inside your body in this moment. Perhaps noticing any differences between about an hour ago and now. Noticing your body, how does your body feel in this moment? As you feel ready, you can begin wiggling fingers and toes and maybe stretching. Taking whatever movements wants to occur naturally. And wherever you are, you're welcome to stay resting and relaxing if you'd like, or if you feel like Coming back to a seated position, do so with as little effort as possible. And if 
if you're comfortable with it, I welcome you to draw your palms together at your heart center. And to take a, note, take a moment to honor yourself. Taking a moment to appreciate your body and your ability to move and breathe. Thank you all for playing with me today, for practicing with me today. I love you so very, very much. Please stay conscious and connected to your breath today. And please stay conscious and connected to your body. Until next time.